the sound of the tractor, the scent of newly turned earth amid the early rains, the promise of profits, surely the stuff of dreams for millions of people across Africa, a reality still enjoyed by the few as South Africa struggles to share out its land. Now the figures say that the majority of farms that are redistributed are no longer working. But this one here at Bronkhorst Spreit in Hauteng, just a couple of hours drive from Johannesburg, most definitely is. At the tender age of 28, Gift Mafuleka is one of Africa's newest farmers and he's loving it. After years of study and hard work on the land, he is now the master of all he surveys. I used to tell the whole class that uh, I, I want to be a farmer when I grow up and they would all laugh at me and they wouldn't believe that, uh, that, that I would really grow up to be a farmer. The government bought this farm from a large-scale food manufacturer. Gift Mafuleka has worked this land for the company for five years after studying agriculture at college. He applied for the land and was selected to take over a five-year lease with the option of renewal, a dream that comes with hard work. As a young farmer and, and a, a person that just started farming, uh, I, I find it difficult when it comes to business skills sometimes. But in the past year, uh, I've focused on that and I've got someone to help me um, put that together and, 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 and make sure that the, skill, the business skills that I acquire, I'm actually able to, to collaborate them and, 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 and make them work for me. This is the result. 11 workers, including the boss, 200 hectares of grazing land and 110 hectares planted with crops. The business plan is to make this farm profitable by the third growing season in about two years' time. In between times, an eye has to be kept on costs. What we actually do is we do our crop plan for each and every crop that you plant, either in here in the intensive vegetable uh, component or in the, in the field uh, crops. We put together um, sort of a budget how much is it going to cost us per item to, to plant the, the crop, to manage it until harvesting it and marketing it. So we, we put that down and we, we estimate what the revenue is going to be and see. But the survival of this farm is an exception rather than the rule. Gift Mafuleka is fortunate in that the former owners, who have a food factory in nearby Delmas, gave him a contract for the supply of the peas planted here. Private business also helped him with tractors and irrigation. Others are not so lucky. In this province of Gauteng, there is more than three quarters of a million hectares of farmland. According to the Ministry of Agriculture, a mere 35,000 hectares have been redistributed into the hands of black farmers, just 4.6%. The fact of the matter is that uh, it doesn't help to give land to people who are not properly trained, properly orientated, uh, with a heart for farming. Not everybody's got a heart for farming. Uh, not everybody's got a heart for all kinds of farming. You know, some people are pastoral people, some people are crop people and so on. So I, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that keep, must keep going, but it needs to be kept going in, in a harmonious way and, and not in a confrontational way. I think that's the sad part to me. The sad part is that so much of it has been seen to be confrontational. And um, that tends to have a negative effect. But where it's done carefully and thoughtfully and um, with people who really have a heart for farming, it can be successful. Overall, land reform in South Africa has struggled. At the birth of democracy in 1994, the government promised 30% of land will be in black ownership by 2014. Since then, the government has bought more than 5.9 million hectares for redistribution. But so far, only about 6% of agricultural land has been transferred, leading to calls for change. Government is, is, is taking it upon uh, himself to identify people, but I think there's quite a lot of um, um, uh, role players that might help in, in identifying people who really want to farm. Because as far as I'm concerned, farms are lending to the wrong hands. And people who are not willing to farm, and people who just after a money doesn't have passion for farming, even, even if they do have that passion, they don't get um, uh, the support that they, they need. Uh, there are so many stories of um, 
wonderful properties that have been handed over to a tribe or to a group and have just been uh, neglected. Uh, tea estates that are now growing weeds and coffee plantations that have deteriorated uh, hopelessly. Now those kind of stories and irrigation schemes that are, that are not functional, those kind of stories tend to get the limelight and the, um, the positive stories uh, very often don't. Um, my, my observation is that where it's been done in cooperation with the with the farming community, the roundabout farming community, and the previous landowners very often. You know, there's a Zulu proverb that says, learn from the man who's walked the path before you. And it's a very good proverb. And where that happens, it can be a success. At stake is stability in agriculture in Africa's biggest economy. As a new farmer, that is something gift Mafuleka wants as much as anyone else. The South African government wants 30% of farms to be black owned by 2014. Many in the industry say this is an unrealistic figure. What is clear is that this is likely to prove a long and painful process.